Hey everyone, this is Tino again for PHP Academy, and in this part we're going to take a further look at character classes. I cut off the previous video kind of poorly, but the something else I'm going to talk about as well is case sensitivity. Let's dive right in with a quick recap. A character class would match any of the characters you put in it, and you would make it by putting the class between square brackets. So, if we wanted to make a character class that would match all vowels, we would do this. Okay, let's expand on this a bit. Say we want to match all letters of the alphabet. You could, in theory, make a character class with all separate 26 letters in it. However, there's a much better way to do this. Namely, character ranges. With a character range, you can uh, make the regular expression match any character within that range. So, let's say in our example we want to match A through Z, right? So we put A and a hyphen Z. And that would match all letters of the alphabet. Well, actually not quite all of them. If you look very closely, this W does not get matched. This R does not get matched. This R does not get matched. This T does not get matched. Why is that? It's quite simple. The reason is, regular expressions do case-sensitive matches. So if we put lowercase a through z here, it will only look for lowercase a through z. Now there's a couple of ways around this. The first one is just put another character range in your class. So A through Z right after it and that fixes the problem. However, there is another method and that is to make the regular expression perform a case insensitive match. You can do this by checking the ignore case box here. As you see it says ignore case I enables case insensitive matching. So let's click that and as you see all uppercase letters get matched as well now. Now if you look at the syntax you'll see that the I flag has been added right after the G flag and we'll need this if we when we start working with PHP but for now just remember that you can click this ignore case box. So let's uncheck that and I want you to know that these are not quite the same. Sometimes you may want to perform a case insensitive match but you do want to match all lowercase and uppercase letters. If that's the case you'll have to use two character ranges within your class like I just did. However if you do want to match to be case insensitive definitely just use the I because that simply makes your regular expression just a little bit shorter. Shorter is better. There's less room for error and the fewer room there is for error the less likely you are to make mistakes. Obviously. Anyway, you can apply character ranges to numbers as well. You could put 0 through 9 here. However, that would be kind of pointless. You could do something like this instead. Now if you only want to match like the first five numbers then you could put 0 through 5, that's actually six numbers, 0 through 4 here and then you would have a logical character class. But it's kind of pointless to do this. Now you will quite often see a character class like this, a through z, uppercase a through z, 0 through 9. Now you might think, okay, then we can just substitute that with the backslash w, right? Well, let's try it. Let's get rid of that and put backslash w. And that seems to work, but remember, it also matches underscores. And if we only want to match numbers and letters, we cannot just use backslash w. 
So that's an important difference to remember. Now, there's one more thing I should mention pertaining to character classes. You can also let a character class match any character that is not in the class. And you can do this by putting a caret sign as the first character in the class. So, say we wanted to match, let's put that underscore back. We wanted to match anything that is not a word character, so anything that's not a letter, number, or underscore. If we put the caret sign here, you'll see that everything else gets matched. Everything that is a number, letter, or underscore, right here, does not get matched. You can do this to ranges as well. So A through Z, A through Z, and 0 through 9. And now you see the same happens, except the underscore gets matched now as well because we tell it to. We tell it to not match these, so match everything else. And that will be all for now. Note that you can put any character you want in character classes. That means symbols as well. However, some symbols have a meaning in regular expressions, so you will have to escape them by putting a backslash in front of them, just like I did with the dot in the first video. If you want to experiment with everything you know a little bit, and put symbols in character classes as well, or just in your regular expressions in general, just scroll through this list of characters here, and well, here you see a list of escaped characters. For example, this will match a literal dollar sign. This will match a literal question mark. And you might be a bit scared or daunted by things like this or this or this. And yeah, those are quite complicated. Um, don't worry about that. For now, just try to experiment with what you have learned so far. And if you feel really comfortable with your own learning skills, by all means, go ahead, look through this list, look at the things you think you may understand, and experiment with them a bit. That's always good. Now, in the next part, I'm going to talk about something slightly similar to character classes. And we're going to take a first look at some of those scary symbols that I mentioned, like question marks, um, dollar signs, carrot signs. We did see a carrot sign already, but this one is just a bit different. And that means in the next part, things may get somewhat more difficult and you may have to watch that video a couple times before you fully understand the contents. But don't worry about that. I'll try to guide you through it as well as possible. See you in the next part.